Hello and welcome back to Intercepting Communication. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the Internet Protocol. So in the previous video, we discussed this concept when we were looking at Ethernet of what is host B. And in that video, we basically said, okay, host B is whatever the MAC address of this interface on host B is. It's this A, A, B, B, C, C, D, E, D, D, E, E, F, F. It's this MAC address, right? This is what we've declared to mean uh, when we say what is host B, um, which is all fine and dandy if we're working on the Ethernet layer and we have these two hosts physically linked together. Um, but things get a little bit trickier when we're not just one hop away, when we're not just physically linked together, and instead we're potentially hundreds of hosts apart on this broader network. Um, and in this case, we're not going to be able to use just the Ethernet layer to discuss what it means to say when we say what is host B. This is where we're going to move to the IP layer. So on a mailing kind of perspective, if we think back to like the mailing protocol, um, we can look at Ethernet in the sense of, let's say we're in an apartment complex and we have a bunch of mailboxes all next to each other. They're all kind of like one link apart, right? It would be very easy to get a packet of information, some letter from host A to host B, or from, from person A to person B, from apartment A to apartment B. Um, we'd be able to just use their apartment number, right? We could just kind of directly route that ourselves um, because they're kind of physically linked together. But if we're potentially mailing things states apart or countries apart, we're going to need more complex routing schemes, right? We're going to effectively use this post office mailing service, and it's going to be delivered from one mailing facility to another, to another, to another, to another. It's going to have this dynamic route to it, and we're going to need um, a more complex addressing scheme in order to start building up this routing information. So maybe the corollary might be, right, having a state, having a a country, having some zip code, having a physical um, address, and then, you know, also maybe having your apartment number, right, that Ethernet address, for example. Um, not, a, not a perfect analogy, but just kind of think of it in those terms because it's, it's kind of quasi-correct for what we're trying to get at here. Um, the idea is that at the IP layer, we're dealing with routing. Things aren't just one host apart. They're not just physically connected to each other in some bridge device, for example. Um, we're going to have to go from this host to this host to this host to this host. We're going to have to route it somehow. And we're going to use the IP layer to do that routing. Um, okay. So in the previous video, we also discussed when we were talking about the Ethernet packet structure that we have this two-byte type thing. So we're finally going to uncover um, one of the possible answers to that type thing. And then in the case of the Internet protocol, um, that type value happens to be 0800. Those are the, the two bytes that make up the type for the Internet protocol. So we put these two bytes in, and now we're saying, okay, these follow-on bytes are Internet protocol. We've got this, this data encapsulated within this Ethernet um, packet. So basically, we have this Ethernet packet that allows us to be physically linked, and then we have this IP packet that allows us to start gaining this routing capability through those physical links. Um, and we've kind of just got that sitting right on top. Okay, so um, what is the structure of the Internet Protocol packet? There's a bunch of bytes here. It's a little more complex than an Ethernet layer. Um, we've got a lot of stuff working here. So the first octet, or first four bits, or one hexadecimal digit, that is an octet, uh, the first octet is the version. So in this case, we're looking at version 4. So if you've heard of IPv4, this 4 is the IPv4, right? This is our version of the internet protocol that we're working with. In this case, we're taking a look at IPv4. Okay, the next octet, the next four bits, is the internet header length. So of this protocol, we have all of this uh, header information, in this case highlighted in green. Um, and if we look at this octet and we multiply it by 4, so 5 times 4, that's how many bytes long this header is. So this is telling us that our header in this case is 20 bytes. And the reason we need this field, unlike in the Ethernet layer, uh, is that the length of the internet protocol header can change because if you kind of sneak peek, look at the end, we've got this options field. Uh, we can have a bunch of optional data in here, which we're not going to discuss in this series, but you can have a bunch of optional data that allows this header to be a little bit longer, and that's why we need this internet header length. Um, the next byte is the differentiated services field. 
We're not going to discuss this. It's um, used in some applications, but it's not super important to what we're doing here. So in this case, we're sending a packet with just zero, zero. We're not using any of these differentiated services. Uh, if you're interested in that, research internet protocol, uh, and you can learn all about the differentiated services field, but it's not super critical for us. So the next uh, two bytes are the total length. So as before we said, we have this internet header length. Well, we also have this total length. And the reason for that, as you might uh, kind of imagine, is that we're going to eventually be stacking even more data on top of uh, IP. So we have IP sitting on top of ethernet. Well, it turns out, as you'll see in the next video, uh, we're gonna put even more data on top of this. And this total length allows us to see what the length of both the header and all the follow-on data is. So in this case, we have hex 14, um, otherwise known in decimal as 20. Uh, so as before, right, we just have a header of 20 bytes. We've also just got a total length of 20 bytes because in this case, we're not stacking extra data on top. Okay, the next two bytes are the identification. Um, not super critical to understand here in this case for our purposes. The identification... Uh, field has to do with being able to identify an IP packet when you start fragmenting it. So um, the, the basic idea here is that we might want to send a bunch of data. So imagine that we want to send, I don't know, you, you theoretically could send gigabytes of data. Uh, you're not going to do that in a single uh, internet protocol packet. And in fact, you're probably not going to do this in a single packet that is identified by a single packet with this identification number. But in theory, you could like have uh, a bunch of data or more likely your device that's routing this data isn't going to be willing to send a whole bunch of data all at once. And in that case, it's going to use this identification field when it goes and fragments your packet apart into a bunch of little small chunks and sends those all separately. Well, this identification field kind of makes sure that we have them all lumped together. Uh, similarly, we've got this flags field that goes into that fragmenting concept. And this flag field, um, in this case, we've got it set to a four, which basically means, hey, don't fragment this packet, whatever you do. The person that's going to go on to send this data, don't split my IP packet apart, don't fragment it. Um, if you need to fragment it because you're unwilling to send uh, data this big, well, just drop the packet, throw it away, just don't deliver it. Like, I don't want you to split my data apart. In this case, we have that set Again, fragmentation is not super important for what we're going to be discussing in this series, but that is what is going on there. Again, the final little value of that fragmentation is the fragment offset. This is when we go and split our IP packet into a bunch of fragments. We can identify that cluster with the identification number. Um, the fragment offset is going to identify which piece of the fragment it is. Again, not super important for this video series. The next byte is the time to live. So every time we go from one router to another router, and you can imagine, right, we have this potentially massive complex network and we're very meticulously routing a packet through that network, through all of these routers deciding which way to push your data. Um, we have this time to live field, which every time it hits a router is supposed to be decremented. So in this case, we are hex 40. Um, which means, uh, right, in decimal 64, we have 64 hops in some sense if each of those routers is to decrement by one before the packet just gets dropped. And the reason for this field is that routing is very complicated and depending on how things are set up, you might end up with a routing loop. You might end up in a situation where this router sends it here to here to here to here to here to here and it comes back to the origin. And in order to prevent network congestion in the sense that we have a bunch of data just constantly circulating and never ending up at where it's trying to go because there's who knows some sort of issue within the network uh, that's preventing it from getting to where it's trying to go and the network's a little confused. Um, we have this time to live that keeps getting decremented and eventually once it reaches zero, routers are told to just drop this packet, stop sending it, and this prevents loops. Okay, and then this isn't a super important concept for this series of videos, but that is what that field is doing. Okay, the next byte, much like the Ethernet, has a byte dedicated to declaring what the follow-on contents protocol is. So in this case, just like in the Ethernet video, we're going to leave those as question marks, um, but this is declaring what the follow-on data is going to be. 
Um, the next two bytes, again, these are also going to be question marks. And the reason for that is that this is the header checksum. So the header checksum is doing some sort of mathematical operation on the entire header and um, producing a result that routers can look at to see if any of the bits have accidentally been messed with. So with this header checksum, we can see if data was corrupted. Um, and if it has been corrupted, we are able to detect that using this header checksum. So in this case, it's question marks because we're missing the protocol, so we can't actually compute the header checksum. Um, and it's just kind of like a little simple mathematical operation to be able to detect corruption. Again, we're not super interested in this concept for this video, but that is what is going on there. Okay, so finally, one of the more important fields for us and kind of super critical to the internet protocol is the source IP address. So in this case, we have 0A000002, aka in decimal 10002. Um, and this is where we're sending from. So if we're sending from 10002 to 10003, uh, we've got this laid out here, right? We have the source IP address, which is four bytes, and then we have this destination IP address, which is four bytes. And this is giving us very important information about where we're coming from and where we're going to. Now, finally, we have some unknown number of bytes, kind of dependent on our internet header length, how big this is. Um, and this can store a bunch of optional data. In this case, we're not super interested in that, but there is the capability for optional data to be included in this header.